Hello and welcome! In this video I would like to uh, share my um, experience of um, uh, using fables at the lesson of English. Um, I can say that the learners uh, enjoyed working with uh, this type of text. Um, However, I should uh, mention that I um, used two types uh, of fables, the classical ones, right, in particular Aesop's fables, and the modern fables uh, by James Thurber. While focusing uh, on fables, we can help uh, um, our learners become more fluent in English. It will definitely enrich their vocabulary. And um, um, besides developing the four basic skills, um, they, um, we are bound to scaffold the development of thoughts, and namely of creative thinking uh, as well as critical thinking. So here we have the first activity, it is definitely a pre-reading activity, uh, in which uh, the class is divided in small groups and each group gets per two pictures, where they have to, in those pictures there are mm, different creatures and they have to determine the differences and similarities between um, them. Uh, afterwards, invite the learners to present them in front. Here are the creatures on the cards. We see an owl and a fox, uh, a goose and a hen, a rabbit and a wolf, a hare and a tortoise, um, an ape and a fox, a lion and a mouse. So, um, in this activity, we can organize a kind of the way I call it an intellectual ba uh, battle. Um, so, uh, the group is to be divided in two. Um, so, you have to work, uh, the learner has to work with a partner and prove that what is presented in their picture is far better than what is in the other. Um, the learners are to speak as if they were that creature from um, the image and uh, then definitely we shall encourage um, them to bring forward strong arguments and um, the one with the, stronger, uh, the strongest arguments um, is bound to win the battle. Uh, another activity Mm, which will um, involve a bit of acting out. Uh, I have entitled it as picnic time. Um, in this um, activity the learners are invited to imagine that those two creatures in their picture uh, have a picnic. They are to act out a dialogue that might possibly happen between them. Um, Encourage them to think of a potential topic they might um, um, deal with, what kind of vocabulary they will use, and also um, ask them to pay special attention to the body language the characters would use. Uh, after this activity you could discuss the choices they made, why, for example, um, uh, the rabbit seemed uh, fearful, or um, the wolf seemed menacing. Okay, um, another activity uh, is to have a class discussion where we could um, invite our um, learners to um, tell what these creatures represent. Um, it's also interesting to find out um, what do you think, uh, what made, what do, what they think, what made the teacher uh, group those particular um, creatures in that particular way. Um, challenge them to think if uh, the two might have any problems. Can there be any communication problems between the two? 
um, also ask them if these creatures can be fictional characters uh, and if they can think of a concrete example. Maybe some of them will know uh, or will recognize the characters from uh, Aesop's fable uh, The Lion and the Mouse. Um, it's also good to uh, encourage students to uh, tell uh, what creatures they associate with and justify their choice. Um, I think mm, those activities, one of them definitely, you cannot use all of them at once, but one of them could be used as, um, mm, let's say, um, a pre-reading activity. Um, I think we can also spare some time to activate the learners' prior knowledge concerning fables, uh, what they know about them, uh, in a very um, succinct way. Definitely, it is a, a fable is a literary genre, it is extremely short. It is fictional, it can be either in prose or verse, and it features animals, legendary creatures, plants, inanimate objects, or forces of nature. Uh, and they are assigned human qualities. At the end, there is the moral, which illustrates a valuable lesson to be taught, to be learned, sorry. Um, we could also uh, determine the structure of a fable, uh, why is it important, because later on we will uh, encourage our learners to uh, write their own versions, uh, their own fables. Uh, so there's the exposition where usually the author introduces the time, the place and the exposition is followed by the conflict, which is usually between good and evil. Then comes the resolution and um, good triumphs over evil in the traditional fable. Um, at the end, the author writes the moral, which definitely teaches a lesson, and this is a moral um, the readers should leave. Um, so, just after having activating this knowledge, it is good to determine the structure of a famous fable. I have chosen uh, Aesop's fable, The Ants and the Grasshopper. One bright day in late autumn, a family of ants were bustling about in the warm sunshine, drying out the grain they had stored up during the summer, when a starving grasshopper, his fiddle under his arm, came up and humbly begged for a bite to eat. What? cried the ants in surprise. Haven't you stored anything away for the winter? What in the world were you doing all last summer? I didn't have time to store up any food, whined the grasshopper. I was so busy making music that before I knew it, the summer was gone. The ants shrugged their shoulders in disgust. Making music? Where are you? they cried. Very well, now dance! And they turned their backs on the grasshopper and went on with their work. There's a time for work and a time for play. So uh, um, I preferred to use this famous uh, um, fable um, because the content is already known to the students. Uh, and as my focus is on uh, uh, something else, I just uh, want to activate their prior knowledge and help them determine um, the structure of the fable. And I have underlined the elements of this exposition, which are in the first paragraph, then uh, the, the afterwards uh, comes the conflict, followed by the resolution, and at the end there's um, what we could encourage our learners to do next is to rewrite the fable. Um, bef mm, before doing this, definitely we can uh, start a discussion and ask students what changes they would make and would they leave the same moral. 
at the end they could present the variant. Um, it is also good to make this activity in small groups and make sure that every member of the group is involved. That is why it is good to assign a leader uh, in each group who will be responsible for um, uh, such issues as what language is used and uh, making sure that uh, each uh, member um, contributes um, to the uh, creation of the fable. Um, the product can be done in various ways. One way that I tried, I asked them to uh, draw the fables on uh, posters. Um, I um, uh, emphasized that uh, um, we shall not focus on the quality of the drawing, but on um, um, uh, the process itself, uh, on the novelty of their variant, and uh, I can say that they really enjoyed uh, doing the activity. Um, now, um, this is another activity already for more advanced even students, and um, um, they should be encouraged to write the fable with the creatures, each group, um, with the pictures uh, of the creatures each group uh, got uh, at the beginning. Um, and again, it can be done in various ways and afterwards see their um, products. Uh, another activity to be done is um, uh, to translate some titles uh, of fables into their mother tongues, but it should be done in a particular way. So the leader of the group, uh, the leaders of the group will stand with the back to the board and each group will have some time to translate the titles from English into their mother tongues. Later on, they will hand in the papers to the leaders, who then will have to uh, translate in English. Afterwards, uh, we can compare the variants, and the uh, trust is very funny. These are some of the uh, tab uh, some of the titles I chose, um, and. Um, uh, they really enjoyed doing this and this activity helped me uh, introduce already the modern fables by James Thurber because all of the titles um, uh, of these fables um, are, um, belong, let's say, to Thurber. Um, oh, we can just before getting into let's say the meaning of the fable um, we can just make sure that the students understand so uh, in order to check the learners understanding we can ask them to write their summary of the fable. I chose this, uh, the fable The Rabbits Who Caused All the Trouble by James Thurber. Within the memory of the youngest child, there was a family of rabbits who lived near a pack of wolves. The wolves announced that they did not like the way the rabbits were living. The wolves were crazy about the way they themselves were living because it was the only way to live. One night, several wolves were killed in an earthquake and this was blamed on the rabbits, for it is well known that rabbits prowled on the ground with their hind legs and caused earthquakes. On another night, one of the wolves was killed by a bolt of lightning and this was blamed on the rabbits, for it is well known that lettuce eaters cause lightning. The wolves threatened to civilize the rabbits if they didn't behave and the rabbits decided to run away to a desert island. But the other animals who lived at a great distance shamed them, saying, you must stay where you are and be brave. This is no world for escapists. If the wolves attack you, we will come to your aid in all probability. So the rabbits continued to live near the wolves and one day there was a terrible flood which drowned a great many wolves. 
This was blamed on the rabbits, for it is well known that carrot nibblers with long ears cause floods. The wolves descended on the rabbits for their own good and imprisoned them in a dark cave for their own protection. When nothing was heard about the rabbits for some weeks, the other animals demanded to know what had happened to them. The wolves replied that the rabbits had been eaten, and since they had been eaten, the affair was a purely internal matter. But the other animals warned that they might possibly unite against the wolves unless some reason was given for the destruction of rabbits. So the wolves gave them one. They were trying to escape, said the wolves. And as you know, this is no world for escapists. Moral. Run. Don't walk to the nearest desert island. Yeah, an interesting modern fable, isn't it? So what we can do, um, we can uh, ask students uh, to describe the steps they took while writing their summary. Um, they, we could encourage to listen to some of their variants and definitely to uh, ask the peers to provide fee, uh, feedback. Um, I also encourage students to do this uh, at home and uh, to share among themselves their summaries and see um, what kind of feedback their peers provide and try to improve the um, uh, as the fable is total, this modern fable is totally different and quite shocking, right? Um, uh, as compared uh, with uh, Aesop's fable, um, we could help uh, our learners in the process of determining the theme and the main idea. How do we do that? Um, here is the tip. We can encourage them to deduce the theme and the main idea of the story by examining, in this particular fable, the nouns that are repeated. The learners are bound to discover that the most repeated nouns are wolves and the rabbits. And can these two creatures, let's say, Co to these two categories, let's say, coexist together. No, there is bound to be a conflict between them. And in our particular fable, right, there is the conflict between the majority, because we have a pack of wolves, right, and a minority, a family of rabbits. Hence, we can understand that most probably the theme of this fable is discrimination and that the main idea is the following. A bigger social group is more powerful than a smaller one. As a result, the more powerful group has prejudice against the minority group, destroying the latter, think thinking that this would solve all their problems. Um, now, um, in the following slides, um, we will have the example of three summaries and um, we can encourage our learners to decide which summary is better and definitely uh, give the reasons why they think so. Similarly, they should be encouraged to make any necessary changes so uh, uh, that the summary um, is even better. So here are the variants. This is the first one. I won't stop. The second one. The third one. Um, we can also mm, discuss with our students what was shocking in uh, this modern fable and in what way uh, this fable differs from the traditional plots. plots. Sorry for that. Um, I just wanted to say um, the following. Um, this uh, example of um, modern fables uh, is very good to be used with definitely more advanced uh, um, learners uh, whose level uh, of language proficiency allows them to understand what actually Thurber wanted to um, 
reflect in the fable and um, uh, doesn't this fable also teach us something so um, somehow um, the students the learner should understand the irony used by the author in order just to um, highlight uh, the theme of discrimination uh, how injustice can uh, harm um, people although in our case uh, um, it harmed the rabbits but we do know that uh, the animals from fables um, illustrate specific human traits so these are a series of activities uh, which you could adjust uh, to your learners needs and I hope you are going to use uh, uh, in your classroom to make your lessons um, more engaging, more motivating, and to help reader, uh, help learners rediscover the beauty of a fable, be it traditional or modern. Thank you.